Nickelodeon was historically run by women, created by a woman, a mother. You know, I worked at Nickelodeon for six years, and when I left Nickelodeon, I was deeply surprised that the rest of the world wasn't run by women, actually. We want to show the world what Power Girl Surfers can do. <laughs> you gotta be quiet, Swerbs! We're doing an interview! <laughs> Do you know this is my 20th year? Um, I was here in the middle uh -huh. when it was run by a lot of men. I had to leave the room often because the men were going to be talking. There was only very specific things that a woman was allowed to do. It used to be women weren't allowed to animate. They had to paint animation cells. And I've watched it grow. I've seen a lot more women now behind the camera. I see a lot more women writing the shows. I see a lot more women as artists. I just see them more. I used to walk onto a set and be the only lady there. I've seen more and more women coming into the studio. It used to be I'd walk into a room and it was like all guys. I was not unheard of. Yes! Let me. And now I walk in and I'm like, ah, hi, hi, fellow women. It's so nice. Yeah, so it changed a lot since I was really young. I wonder. Now it is really fantastic to be in a space where we have so many different perspectives that are leading this studio and that many of those leaders are women. The leadership at the studio is comprised of mostly women and it deeply influences the way that we hire and the way that we identify material and empower other women. I love being able to be that person that can bring another woman into the industry. I have worked with so many amazing women. They've created such a beautiful community at Nickelodeon, and I think that community has really helped me to grow as an artist and helped me to feel really comfortable in the industry. There's just something so gratifying working with a team of people who are so passionate about what they're putting out into the world. I really don't care what we do as long as we do it together. Me too. I love animation. It is one of the most amazing, open, and creative storytelling mediums. Animation is such a collaborative experience, so it's always so uh, amazing to start off with a vision and then let go a little bit and see how that idea evolves amongst so many talented work colleagues. I'm the bestest artist I know, better than Picasso and Van Gogh. From a women's perspective, this is a great home for us. The level of creativity that you can do from a simple color palette to creating a fully developed emotional character is all at your fingertips. Home is where you're surrounded by other critters that care about you. I, I grew up a military kid. And no matter where I was in the United States, I could just turn on the TV and watch Nickelodeon after school. And all of my friends were there. The next thing you gotta do is stop saying you're scared. You're big and you're brave, like a big brave dog. Female Nick character that inspires me the most would definitely have to be Susie Carmichael. She was just the raddest. She was the first character I think I ever saw in cartoon form that looked like me. Kimmy Finster. It was really great to see another Asian on TV. I never realized how important that was to me until I grew up. No way am I apologizing to a sour old man like you! I drew a lot of inspiration from seeing Katara grow in season one. She had flaws and she was trying to improve herself. She has all of these traits that are so traditionally feminine, like she's very compassionate and very caring, but she's still tough and can save the day, which you don't see a lot, and I really love that. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm new at this. Give me a break! Eliza Thornberry, she's a bit of a nerd, like I was back in the day, and <laughs> probably still am. Let's do this! April O'Neil, literally day one, jumps in. I love that kind of fight that she has behind her. You gonna have to step to me, okay? Hey, Danny. I loved Danny and Sam's 
relationship too because it wasn't a romance. I know people really wanted them to date, but Sam's an independent woman. She does what she wants. I really like Helga. She's also was like not afraid to be herself, even if she might not always be the most popular person for it. I'm pretty, I'm feminine, I'm delicate. Oh, excuse me, young man. I'm a girl! I'm not nervous. I'm soaking up this powerful moment whereby I take matters into my own hands and you know. I want to be a part of that magic for someone else. I love that I get to tell stories about my community. We get to give voice to people who had no voice before, so I think that's awesome. So you almost done? Because it looks good to me, Thea Frida. What are you talking about? Maria doesn't even have a face yet. I'm waiting for the right expression. For a while, there was like one perception of what a woman looks like, and that's just not true. I want all the women to be heard. She is blind and tiny and helpless and fragile. She cannot help you. Yes, I can. I'm most hopeful that there'll be more female show creators in the future. There weren't as many female creators back in the 90s. Over time, where you're looking at Dora and you're, now you're looking at Santiago, you can see this progression of more women coming into the field. Even just in my time working here since 2004, there's been such an increase of women in the studio. There's more women coming into the workplace in animation than ever. And I find that to be incredibly encouraging, especially after having seen the landscape shift over the past 20 years. It already makes me so hopeful for future generations to come because it's already so powerful now, so I can only imagine it's just gonna get up from here. I feel like before, it wasn't safe to share our true feelings about things, and I think now that there's a space to talk about our dreams and our goals and not really be shut down, I think is why there's hope. As long as we empower each other's voices, we have nothing to worry about. I am hopeful for the women in animation that we don't actually have to call it women in animation, that we will just be women and men and everyone in animation. I just look forward to, to seeing the animation world looking more like the world around us. We need more female executives. We need the women at the top. We need the women that own the company. We need those. Does everyone here have to do everything you say? Yes, honey, I'm the boss. Could you tell me? I just hope to see more women in animation and in creative leadership supervisor roles. As I've kind of moved up the CG pipeline, there's been fewer and fewer women, and I know that's something we're all actively trying to look at and address and make sure there's open opportunities for everyone. I think some of the steps that we can take to make sure that there are more women in the industry is, first of all, I think it's showing up being present and being available. Just go to the coffee. If, if you're a pond and no no water's rushing in or out, no energy's going in or out, I feel like you get stagnant when you're constantly putting out good things and helping this person, helping that person. They help you, you help them. It's like a thriving ecosystem of jobs and algae. Do you like another tea sandwich? I've got one right here. It's up to us to look after one another and make sure that we encourage each other to thrive. And if you meet someone who's new to the industry or struggling, reach out and just listen and, and offer whatever advice that you can. If I could talk to a younger me, I would probably tell them to not be afraid to step up. Don't be afraid to speak up and use your voice. Just say what you gotta say. The worst thing that can happen is someone says no. Big deal. And everyone has an idea and every idea is valid. You have a viewpoint that's valid, a background that's unique, and experiences that are interesting. Don't be afraid to talk about what you are capable of doing and what you want to take on next. Put yourself out there. Be willing to get at least three no's. Keep at it. You have historical facts that women keep fighting for what they want, and they get it. Always accept new challenges. They're only there to help you. The little struggles you meet along the way in your life are kind of important to get where you are. You will get there even if it's a long and windy road. Don't worry about what other people are doing. You have to do what is really the best for you and what you love. Sometimes you just want to do Danny Phantom fan art all day, and that's fine. Drawing something is better than drawing nothing. Keep creating worlds and stories. They will matter one day. They will make a difference. Always aim high. Don't be so afraid of failure and embrace growth. Nothing stays the same. Things are always evolving and ever changing. Don't be swayed by other people's opinions of you. You know who you are and you know what you can do. Don't let them tell you otherwise.
I found that I'm the strongest when I'm truly 100% myself. And don't try to be other people. Be goofy, be silly, and have fun. <laughs> I am the creator and executive producer of Santiago of the Seas. I'm vice president of Animation Originals Development. EVP of Animation. A staff writer at the Casa Grandes. I'm a CG supervisor on the new Rugrats. I am the senior vice president of animation development for Nickelodeon. I am evolving. I am adventurous. Creative. Courageous. Tenacious. One of a kind. Still a child. Tiny and mighty. Clever. Nervous. <laughs> Brave. I was scared to do this, so then I said, let's go do it. Doing okay. Doing my best, anyway.